Last week, I shared the first part of my latest photo shoot in Las Vegas, Nevada. If you haven't seen it, you can watch it at the link above. Now, this is an ancient August photo shoot. So for the first part, I used older gear, the Nikon D5000. My questions were, could I enjoyably capture good photos in a dimly lit hotel room with the D5000? And how different would the experience be and how different would the photos look from photos taken with a brand new Nikon D810? I wasn't really comparing the two bodies. I mean, one's old, one's new, one's cropped sensor, the other's full frame. But I was really interested to see how the D5000 would hold up, both in user experience and in end product. And I used the D810 as the baseline because it's one of the best cameras on the market right now for low light shooting. I shared the photos that I took with the D5000 in last week's video. So now let's take a look at some photos from the D810 to see what I found out. I took a few photos around the room. I absolutely loved that the hotel room has art, fashion, and architecture books scattered about. So unsurprisingly, the D810 did great. <laughs> it's fabulous, and this low light situation was no problem for it. When going from the D5000 to the D810, one of the biggest things that we noticed was how autofocus behaved. It was much quicker and easier to autofocus on the D810 in the lower light scenes. Now I expected that coming in. This is something that I often mention in my reviews of cameras, and it's important to remember when you're shopping for your next body. While some cameras may have good high ISO performance, meaning that they can take a clean shot at a higher ISO sensitivity, the performance of the autofocus in low light doesn't always match up. I've used cameras that can take a crisp photo in low light, but getting the camera to autofocus in order to take that photo is challenging or sometimes impossible. So while the D5000 did well overall, the photos looked great. There were only a couple times where it really struggled to autofocus in the low light. The D810 is simply more responsive. It's quicker to autofocus and there were zero challenges with low light performance. Okay, for my final test, I put myself into the same position for one photo with both cameras. Here is the photo taken with the D5000. I love this couch. It was the whole reason that I chose this hotel for the shoot. And here is the similar photo taken with the D810. All in all, not much different. And here they are together while I talked to you for a minute about noise and editing. Both of these photos had noise in the original shot. The D5000 did have more noise than the D810, but it wasn't that much more, and it still wasn't objectionable. I should note that I did edit these photos in the same way using a film simulation filter, and it did add some additional noise. Okay guys, here's the deal. Yes, the D810, was a bit easier to use. There wasn't even a moment of uncertainty or waiting for the camera to find focus. But did it really affect the overall experience or the outcome? No, it didn't, at least not in this situation. Because here's the thing, I was in a cool location and I worked with the challenges and the opportunities that I had in the environment. So send me back to the Cosmopolitan Hotel with the D5000 and a lens that is solid in low light, or send me back with the latest and greatest gear, and I'd be happy either way. Now, am I saying that you should trade in your new flashy gear for the ancients? No, not necessarily. Old gear can work great. Newer gear is often about convenience. Convenience in features, and often speed and handling as well. If it's something that you use every day, all of those little improvements can make a difference in the quality of your work and how you feel about your work. If you're an occasional shooter, or even if you just enjoy a greater challenge, grab anything that can take pictures and fire away. If you want to see the comparison shots or more from either part of this shoot, I've put a link to my site in the description below. There, you'll see these two comparison shots along with the specific gear that I used, the camera, the lenses, 
and the technical specifications for each shot as well. And then VIPs, log in while you're there because you will see an extra video where I will walk you through how I edited these photos and share some last thoughts. Plus, there's a whole gallery of D810 shots as well.